What's up everyone? I'm your female otaku, and I'm here to give you my final impressions on the fall 2017 season. Special shout out to Lupus Rose, Scott Report, and BB World for donating to my Patreon. If you'd like a shout out in the next impressions video, then click on the Patreon link in the description to donate. This video will contain spoilers, but don't worry, I left a timestamp in the description to each anime I talk about. Therefore, you won't get spoiled on a series you're interested in watching. Not only that, but as I'm talking about a series, I will also mention two anime that I'll be talking about next. For the spoiler-free version, check out my Top 10 Fall 2017 anime video. With all that said, let's get started. Ginny Tyson was quite the roller coaster for me during the second half. Sometimes I was at the edge of my seat, and sometimes I was pissed off or bored out of my mind. They stretched out Tigers and the Twins' backstory for far too long. And you're not gonna give me Rabbit's backstory even though he was the main villain? Not cool. Learning about Rat's ability made up for a lot of the problems I had, because technically, everyone won depending on the timeline. However, I still have a bitter taste in my mouth because Rat didn't do much. And BAM! He's suddenly the winner? At least we got to see a bit of the other timelines, because Ox, Chicken, Dog, and Boar were my favorites. Children of the Whales is far from over. With a new alliance forming as well as another war, I can only pray that a season 2 will be announced. I'm surprised that Leontari lived. I thought his death really meant something, so I was pretty disappointed that he survived. I didn't really get Nettie's purpose. She kind of just popped up at random moments just to promote the soundtrack. The truth behind Falunia was so depressing, and I felt so bad for these guys. Lastly, as much as I love Chakuro, I'm pretty happy he was more of a background character in the second half. With the second half having no main character, we got plenty of screen time with the villains and the people of Falunia. Blend S ended on a pretty cute note. I was squealing like crazy at all the adorable moments in episode 11 with Kaho and Akizuki. Owner's little scene with the lady dog was also sweet. As soon as I heard Hiruri speak, I was like, holy crap, that's the voice of Nico. Sora Toyui brought so much life and personality to Hiruri, and that's what made me like his character. Gotta say, I never thought we would see Micah questioning her feelings for Dino. She's totally clueless on that kind of stuff. I doubt we'll get a season 2, but if we do, I'll definitely watch it. This is what I wanted from Osamatsu-san. Sure, it's outrageous, but when you have the brothers interact as brothers, you get some realistic and funny skits. Like when Ichimatsu wanted his brothers to be more considerate, or when Karamatsu was learning how to say no. This is what I want, not a bunch of poop jokes. Also, those Nyanchan and Todoko skits have me dead. Anime guitars went totally wild! At first it was your regular school club comedy slice of life anime, but then it said screw this and went full on parody mode. Instead of referencing series or talking about regular otaku stuff, they parodied all sorts of series, from 90s anime to sports anime and anything else you can think of, they did it. I still enjoyed the second half, even though it turned into something completely different. The anime is called Kino's Journey, right? So why do half of the episodes focus on other characters? That annoyed me so much. Kino and Hermes are great on their own. I don't want the boring adventures of Shizu T and that dog. The episode about Kino's master was interesting, but then again, I just want Kino. I'm definitely going to watch the original in hopes that all I get is Kino and Hermes. I've mentioned this on Twitter, but I'll expand upon what I tweeted. The ancient Magus's bride is like a folktale. There's no evil overlord for the hero to defeat, and there's no war brewing between the mages and sorcerers. Just a fantastical world that we explore and make new friends along the way. Can't wait to see what else the series will bring us. I have the same praises as everyone else when it comes to Inuyashiki, so let me mix things up by telling you the problems I have with it. Inuyashiki is not without its flaws, and this includes the manga, which I have read. I understand why these OP powers were given to Shishigami and Inuyashiki, as the purpose for the story is to make you question what it would be like if two particular people had the ability to become God. The thing is that the powers don't make sense. I understand the technological part of it, but bringing back the dead and healing any wound doesn't make sense when you're a combat machine. I also was never a fan of the final arc, where the meteor was going to destroy the world. Again, I understand why this happened, as it was the only way to kill off Shishigami and Inuyashiki. Because whether you like it or not, they had to die. People of our world are not supposed to have powers. What I wasn't a fan of was how it was done. But the meteor was kind of random and popped up at an odd time. But other than that, I really enjoyed Inuyashiki, and I will purchase all the manga volumes and display them on my shelf. So we didn't find out why Moriko quit her job, but at least we got progression with her character. I'm glad Moriko wants to be more confident, and I'm super glad that Moriko and Sakurai are getting closer. The fact that Sakurai tried confessing his feelings to Moriko twice shows that it won't be long till the two become a couple. They are going on dates, after all. Was that so hard, Kekai Sensen? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! You finally learned to characterize your large cast. 
you also learned how to properly intertwine an overarching story. And some way, somehow, the OSC was even better than the last season. You scared me at first, but overall, you pulled through Kekai Sensen and beyond. Thank you. My boy, Ray. Isn't he the best? Not only did he win the newcomer tournament, but he also went straight to Hina to see if she was okay. I know a lot of people ship these two, but I see them as brother and sister. As for Hina, I know exactly how she feels. I was bullied back in elementary school for reasons I still don't know. Like Hina, I tried to stand up for myself from time to time, but that only made things worse. I would cry and get frustrated, and the teachers didn't do anything, and my parents never experienced bullying, so they didn't know what to do either. I just have to applaud the series for its sheer rawness. They showed the reality of bullying, and it hit a bit too close to home for me. What's with all the Fate Apocrypha complaints? This series was amazing! That fight between Chiron and Achilles was not only epic, but had so much heart and meaning to it that you could not look away. Astolfo became more and more likable as the series went on, and it was pretty well paced with the masters given enough screen time and everything. Not sure why so many people didn't like it, but I loved it. As I was binging Welcome to the Ballroom, I found myself getting angrier and angrier with each episode. So much so that I dropped it at episode 21. First off, I can't stand Chinatsu. I hate tsundere's that are 90% soon and 10% dede. All she does is yell, nag, and cause problems for Fujita. Second, I'm annoyed at how the competitions are handled. Literally every single match, the characters are all saying how horrible Fujita and Shinatsu's performance is. But somehow, they pass each round and even get in first place at times? That doesn't make any sense! It's like the rules don't even matter! If there's a season 2, I will not be watching it. The only other anime I dropped was Code Realize. Just got so busy with the holiday season that I forgot all about it. Be on the lookout for the Winter 2018 First Impressions video, which will be uploaded as soon as three episodes have aired for each anime of the season. Don't forget to comment about the anime that you watched during the fall season, and if you're announcing a spoiler, please make sure to say spoiler alert before you comment, or else it will be deleted. Make sure you check out the links in the description for my social media and t-shirt line. And subscribe to my second channel for lifestyle videos. I'm your female otaku, Sayonara.